Hey, what's up guys, it's Checkmate Flips, and today we're gonna go through some of the questions that I answered on Instagram. So I sold around 30K in December, I sold around 40K in January, and I'm on track to do at least 40 this month. So um, I'm doing this full time, and I'd love to help you guys however I can. I do mostly online arbitrage. So let's get into the first one. You can definitely do it part time. So the only fees that really matter for this discussion is the $40 a month and whatever software costs you have. So you just need to make sure you're listing enough to offset those costs, but you can still do it part time. Can I do Amazon part time or do I have to do it full time and go all in in order to deal with all the fees involved? The main thing that you have to think about is the fees that are gonna happen every single month. So there's the Amazon seller account fee, which is $40 a month. And you're gonna want that in almost every situation. In most situations, you're gonna want Keepa, which is $20 a month. Most people would do better if they have inventory labs. So that's around $45 a month. So the thing you have to think about if you're going part-time is that in order to break even, you do need to list and sell enough profit to pay for those things. And then whatever you're gonna be making is on top of all those fees. So thinking about it this way, if you are full-time, you're gonna have a lot more income coming in and inventory going in than you are the costs. Um, but if you're part-time, let's say all of that adds up to around $100 a month um, and you're wanting to make $500 profit a month, you're gonna have to list and sell at least $600 profit in order to pay for that $100 and then make your $500. And so that's still very doable. It's especially once you understand the processes, you can definitely do it part-time. One of the other parts of this is that at the beginning, sometimes it is good to spend a bit more time on it than you would hope to do in the long run. So what I mean by this is when you start out on Amazon, you're not going to understand how to do too much and your time isn't going to be very efficient at all. You're not going to have things outsourced. You're not going to know how to use your softwares. You're not going to know how to get profitable inventory. And so you might end up spending a lot more time than someone who has been doing it for a long time. Like for example, for me, when I started reselling in general, I was spending more than 40 hours on it sometimes. Um, just because I didn't know what I was doing, but I wanted to learn it and like understand how I was gonna do it. But as you learn it and as you know the systems, you can get to a point where you can maintain and do it part-time if you want to. You can end up spending a lot less time doing it. There are also people who have all their processes down so much that they have VAs who do every single part of their business and Therefore, they literally just oversee a bunch of VAs and potentially employees and people at warehouses potentially. Um, so there's so many different directions that you can take it. And if you are good at delegating things, this really can become more and more part-time for you. But it does take upfront work because what do those people have to do? They had to make systems for those people to work for them and teach those people. So it's a lot of trade-offs there. How do I start selling on Amazon? You're gonna need an Amazon account. Get the professional account. It's 40 bucks a month, it's worth it. If you're gonna make money, that's what you need. So just start an account. A big part of this is you just have to determine whether you're actually wanting to sell on Amazon or not. You need to just make the choice and then once you make the choice, just type into YouTube how to start an Amazon seller account and getting the professional is the account that you're gonna wanna do if you're actually trying to make money with it and sell over 40 units a month. But really, the best way to do it is to just type it into YouTube and get the instructions there, Get a, just do a full walkthrough, just follow along, and just do that once you've decided that you actually wanna do it, whether it's whatever model you're gonna do, however you're gonna get the items, like regardless, you're gonna need a seller account, so just start one. First, you gotta master the task yourself. So you gotta be an expert at how to do the thing that you're trying to have the VA or employee do. Then you do the task yourself and you write everything out in extreme detail so that they can do it too. And that's how I do it. Similar to what I was talking about before, in order to actually delegate tasks like that, 
you're gonna have to form an SOP, a standard operating procedure. So basically that is the process that you want the employee or VA to do for the thing that you're wanting them to do. Basically, it literally is as simple as the answer that I was giving. You really need to just actually understand the task that you're doing. You have to understand it. You can't just delegate it um, if you want it done a certain way and you don't know how to do it. You could just hire someone who knows how to source. They're gonna source stuff and you're gonna make mistakes because you don't know how to double check their work. So I would say the best way to do this is to understand what you're trying to do first. Then the way I do it is I write everything out. I do the thing and I write out everything in super obvious detail. Like think trying to explain it to your mom or to your dad or to someone that's completely not involved. Hopefully you hire someone that has a bit more Amazon experience than that, but literally make it super obvious and clear. Recently I've been doing a lot from eBay, but I've also done Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond, and Nike. All those are good options. Think about it like this. A Walmart only has so many customers that it's actually going to serve the actual brick and mortar store. It's in Georgia. It's in Denver. It's in New York City. Amazon has the entire nation of customers. They have more exposure. They have better customer service. And they are a store that has just about everything in stock most of the time. So it's a better customer experience and therefore the prices are sometimes going to be higher on Amazon than even at Walmart. So that's why there's the opportunity where you can buy something from Walmart or buy something from eBay or buy something from Nike or Walgreens or whatever it is. And you can sometimes, and I do say sometimes, sell it for higher than what you can sell it at the actual stores, even including all the fees. So think about retail stores. If you have local stores, that's also really good. Um, sometimes there are situations where the item is only found in your part of the country and people in New Hampshire want the item from Texas. Those types of situations can be really good as well. So think retail stores, think online stores. Um, there's a lot of different options. For RA, you can either go after clearance or you can buy replen. So if you're going after clearance, you can just scan with the Amazon Seller app or you can potentially use BrickSeek. And if you're going after replens, I would just look through other people's storefronts and then try and find it at the store that you're going to. <laughs> what softwares do you use for RA? So I personally don't like RA very much, but I did it for a while, so I'm not the biggest expert in this. But there's two types of ways that people do RA a lot of the time. They're either going and looking for lots of clearance, and these are heavily discounted items that the store is trying to get rid of, and sometimes you find really good deals there. And there's also uh, what you could call looking for replenishables. There's softwares that you can use for both, but regardless, you're gonna use the Amazon Seller app. That's just included with your $40 a month subscription fee. With Amazon, you just use that on your phone, and um, I didn't mention this in the little um, in the little answer, but Keepa is a really good tool for RA and for OA. It's so important, and it'll help you save so much money because you'll not buy things that you shouldn't be buying, and you'll buy more of things that you should be buying, and it's a really good deal. For example, one time I was out doing RA, and I found a ton of discounted Curix, and there were 13 of them and they were discounted to 50 bucks and they're usually at 100 bucks. So I was able to look at the Keepa and see, okay, these sell very quickly. So I was able to buy a lot of them and they all sold very quickly uh, of the ones that I bought. What's the minimum I like to make on an OA product? So there really isn't a right answer to this. People do so many different things. For me, it really depends on how much capital I have available to me at the moment. Um, but if I have a lot, 30%. One thing I forgot to mention in my answer is the fact that you really, really need to take into account how fast it's going to sell. You don't want to be buying things that are 30% ROI that are going to take months and months and months to sell. I mean, unless you're just, I, I really don't know where that would ever make sense. But if it's gonna be 100% ROI or you're gonna double your money, 
like maybe you are okay with sitting on it for a little while. There's honestly so many different ways to do it, but definitely take into consideration how fast it's gonna sell. Sales velocity is really, really important. There are big operations that are buying things that are even 10% profit margin, turning $100 into $110. Those people are at massive scale, they have a lot of capital, they buy things that sell quickly, and they're, they have all their systems down, so why not turn $100 into $110? But then there's other people who maybe they're doing RA, maybe they're just getting started, maybe they have like $500 to buy inventory with, they can't be doing 10% margins. They can't probably even be doing the maybe industry standard of 30% profit margin. They're probably gonna end up doing bigger margins than that, and but they're gonna be doing a lot less of it. So they're gonna be making a lot less money. So the point is you need to be able to find products and you need to be able to have money to buy the products and you need to be able to send them in and have that delegated, which leads us to the next question. I love this question because you're wanting to delegate ASAP, but um, some of your orders are probably going to be slight mistakes, so being able to return them is probably going to help. Um, so once you have more confidence in your buying and making sure you're not making mistakes, then I would use a prep center. Yeah, just thinking about the idea of using a prep center immediately, I would feel like it's probably good to get like a month or two under your belt. Um, this is a super subjective answer. Um, in my personal opinion, I just feel like it would be good to get the hang of Amazon FBA a little bit, like understand like what you're selling, maybe do a test order to yourself and understand and make sure that you're actually getting what you think you're getting. That way you don't have too many customer issues. Using a prep center is extremely helpful, but I think it's even more helpful if you actually know what you're doing with Amazon. You're going to end up having a lot of mistakes if you use it too soon, I think. What's the price range of your best replens? So for me, I personally like to do more expensive items or at least on the more expensive item end. So oftentimes the sale price is over $100. That's what I like. Yeah, for me, I personally just prefer more expensive items, but there's profit to me be made in every single price range of item. You could get really good at small and light and get really good at your shipping processes and just make an absolute killing with that. You could also do mid-tier items. You could do higher tier items. There's just a lot of different ways to do it and there's really no right answer. It's just kind of like what works for you and what do you prefer doing and what do you feel like you do well. Do you do wholesale or do you only do online arbitrage? So for me, I only do online arbitrage. I don't do any wholesale. Do you only do online arbitrage or do you also do wholesale? So I currently don't do any wholesale and I just do online arbitrage. I find that I have plenty of things to buy. There's lots more items that I could be sourcing. Um, money is more of the issue at the moment and I'm working on getting more credit and working on that. But wholesale is really good for solving that problem of I have too much money, so let's spend it on fast moving inventory that I buy at bulk. And for me, I can still buy a lot for online arbitrage. I'm fine. I don't necessarily need to go to another model. I kind of want to fully explore what I'm doing here with online arbitrage before I even go to something else. If you guys have any further questions, please message me on Instagram. I reply to all my DMs. And if any of this video was entertaining or helpful, then feel free to help me out by subscribing and by liking the video. I'm trying to get a gauge for what you guys are finding helpful and what's actually helping you grow your Amazon store. Because I remember when I was getting started, I really owe it to some people who helped me out because of their free content. And so I'm wanting to do the same for you guys because I know what it's like to be not making the money that you're wanting to make. And it really sucks. So Amazon's a big space. There's space for other people to join. And when you guys get better, it raises the tide so that I get better. So let's raise the tide together and let's all make money. Take care.